welcome to my YouTube channel. You, 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 YouTube channel. <laughs> hey, fabulous fiber friends. My name is Karen, and I am your host of the Katie Gecko Knits YouTube channel. This is a knitting podcast, mostly about knitting fiber, sometimes crochet, and and sometimes dogs or little anecdotes that I feel like sharing with you guys. Oh my God, you guys. It is still so hot here. I have no makeup on. In the infamous words of Christina from the Chelsea Pearls, I am a hot mess today. Oh my gosh, I'm still so tired. The puppy is not doing very well on sleeping through the night. He did for a couple of days and now it's up three times. And the old dog, our Doberman, oh, he too, he's having issues, so he's up a couple times a night. So this old gal is feeling her age today and for the past weeks, many weeks. But I want to share with you guys my completed Soldatna crop. And I'll tell you uh, how I, how I, um, any mods I made, which really aren't many. And I will share with you my work in progress. I think it's like 95 again today. Oh my gosh. So let's talk about the Soldatna crop. Wait, do I have anything, any juicy gossip to tell you guys? No, I do not think so. I guess I'll put on the Soldatna crop to show you. It's a little hot to put on, but I'll put it on, I'll show you, and I'll probably be taking it off quite quickly. Uh, but mine is to suffer for you guys and to show off our knitting, right? Um, okay, hold on. Okay, here's the Soldatna. I'm standing on tippy toes so you can see it. We will see how long I can survive in the Soldatna. So, most, so many of you have already made this. As I sometimes do, and I've mentioned this to you guys before, I will start with a smaller needle size for the cast on, work the ribbing or whatever the pattern calls for, and then I will increase the needle size as I get further into the, um, the, the yoke section. Then when I got, so I did all my short rows, I, I, I did my ribbing in one needle size, then I increased the needle size to a size six and I did, um, you do like a stockinette section, you're doing short row shaping, you know, for the neckline to raise up the back a little bit. So I did that in a size six and actually I went up to a size seven for the color work and then I used the size seven all the way through the rest of the body of the garment. And I did that thinking, I live in a hot climate and I didn't want the fabric to be too dense. I was concerned that it might be too loose, but I don't think, I think I showed you guys last time that I was a little concerned. I held it up and I thought, oh, is it going to be a, too, a little too loose, the gauge? But I don't think it is. It's fine. Other knitters might look at it and say, gee, it really should be a little tighter to be really perfect. And, and maybe not. I don't know. I, I, think, I think it works. It's okay. Um, all the yarn is by Skein Cocaine. All the details, the yarn colors are in, I think the green is succulent, the eggplant is aubergine, the gray is smoky skies, and the, the pale lavenderish I think is gothic, but all the details are on my Ravelry Projects page. So, um, so I followed the pattern, and it's so easy, you guys. I am not a great color work knitter because I'm still fairly new at it, and so yoke sweaters I find challenging. And this was a great pattern. So if you're new-ish to color work, this is really an easy pattern. There are no floats that are super long, although when there were floats that would have been five or I think the max ever, and it was only for a short period of time, there may have been a six stitch float. So I actually, I would capture the color not in use at the time. I would capture that like on the third stitch and then finish just so the floats weren't too long. And so that worked out really well. And I think also because I went up a needle size that helped with, I had no puckering. So that, that I was thrilled with. So that is that. And let's see for my underarms. 
Oh, I think also, I think I actually, sometimes with these yoke sweaters, I notice that when you raise your arm, that the garment will come up. And I personally am not a fan of that. I want, you know, if you, if you raise your arms, the, the body of the garment should stay in its place. It shouldn't all be lifting up and down. So I added a couple of stitches, partially because I always, 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 when I knit in the round, I put a pearl faux seam, a pearl um, stitch at the center of each, what would be considered a side seam. So I always do that and I mark those off so I don't forget, oh my god, I forgot to do my pearl stitch. So I always do that. And actually, I think it also helps, which I've mentioned before, when you do that, when you're knitting in the round and it's a spiral, it's not really a complete circle, right? It spirals up. I think that pearl bump help breaks up that um, that sometimes lopsidedness that you can get when you knit in the round. The garment will twist slightly because you're, you know, spiral knitting basically. And so I think I'm not sure. Maybe you guys know or agree or disagree, but I think that pearl bump, that pearl seam, uh, helps diminish that sort of twisty effect that might happen on some of our garments. <clears throat> I don't think it happens on all garments, but you know, I don't know because I always include a pearl bump. I don't think I've ever knit in the round where I didn't, except hats, right? But that doesn't count. But like a garment, I think I've always included a pearl seam. And I probably picked that up from someone. I'm sure I didn't come up with it on my own. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe I read it somewhere or on someone's Ravelry page or I'm not sure where I heard it maybe on someone's YouTube channel, long, but years ago. And so I always do that when I knit in the round. So if you don't, you might want to try that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because that works really well. Um, <clears throat> I, oh, I made the sleeves a little bit longer, so I carried, I'll come up close. <clears throat> you can see I carried the pattern. I think you're just supposed to put the ribbing right in here. And I carried the pattern, so I carried it a little bit longer which I think others may have done as well, if I remember on Ravelry, uh, but I don't recall. Luckily, I had enough yarn, so I was able to do that. And I had quite a bit of yarn left over, so I'll probably make a hat or something with that I had to match. This is all skein cocaine yarn, as I mentioned. The colors are gorgeous. I'm definitely taking it to Rhinebeck so that Gina and I can get a picture in it together. Um, Maybe I'll pick up some yarn from her while I'm there, more yarn, but in brighter colors. And I do have Gina's yarn in brighter colors, I just haven't made anything with it yet. And if I can be Speedy Gonzalez with my knitting, I may do another love note in my Surrey uh, Skein Cocaine, Surrey yarn. What is it, like mohair, Surrey mohair, whatever it's called? because it is so beautiful, so gorgeous, and they're bright, they're really bright colors, so I know that'll really be fabulous. I think that was about it, really. Um, I, I may have, what did I do? Oh, and as I always do, you guys, right, I always do my slip stitch crochet around all my edges, all my hems, my neck hem, my sleeve hem, my, the hem hem, and I'm getting warm, so I'm going to take this off. Sorry, I have to take it off. Oh my gosh. This way I can show you too. Yeah, I can show you the whole thing better. Okay, that's better. So, um, and what I did, I was a little more conscientious about, so that I could talk about it, about how I do the slip stitch crochet around ribbing. Now this is two by two ribbing. It may have called for one by one, I forget now, but I did two by two, although around the neck I think I did one by one, but the rest of it I did two by two. So what I did is I think I would do my slip stitch crochet four or five stitches, then skip a stitch, and then continue with the slip stitch crochet four or five stitches, slip, skip a stitch, and then keep going. And that way, right, that, you know, you do, it's not too tight, but I, I did it at first every stitch, and it, it started pucker it flaring out like a skirt, and we didn't want that, so I, I redid it. So that's an approximation. So if you want to try the slip stitch crochet to reinforce your edges, your hems, your ribbing, 
Um, see what works for you and your gauge and if you're doing one by one, two by two, three by three, whatever your ribbing pattern is, see what works best for you. You may have to skip a stitch every so many slips, uh, crochet slip stitches so that it doesn't either pucker or flare out. Um, but let me show you up close. That's how it looks. Okay, there's my slip stitch crochet. So you get, and it doesn't really interfere with your ribbing. And it's very secure. Same around, same around the neckline. Maybe I just look horrible today. <laughs> I'm tired again. I was up five times last night, you guys, for the dogs. My husband's ill, so he was coughing and getting up, and, and he's jet-lagged from, he was in Japan, so he's not sleeping well, so the whole house is a hot mess. Okay, so there is around the neckline. Oh, and here's all, here's my color work. I'm going to see if you guys can see that. I'll step back. It's a gorgeous pattern, and what really captured me about this kit, um, Gina from Skein Cocaine had posted, and she used these colorways, and I loved them. And what really drew me to this particular kit was this section here. I loved the gray, and I'm not sure the color's picking up properly, but in her version, I love how this looks. This is so gorgeous. Right, the dark purple, this pale gray, and then the lavender little, little uh, stitches in there. It's really stunning. Actually, my husband too. I tried it on. I showed him, and he said, "Oh my God, how do you do that?" Um, so I showed him. Not that he wants to learn knitting, and I will show you guys in case anyone's interested. Um, just in case you're a new color work knitter that here is, right, so there I'm getting better with my, I'll come up closer, that is the inside of my work, and it's not too, not too bad, and then here is the bottom section. So I really love this pattern and I hope, hope, hope that I have time to make another one because I bought yarn, I don't know if I showed you guys last time, but I bought some yarn from my local yarn store, the Altered Stitch, with the plan to make another soldatna, but now that I completed this one, I may need a little bit more than I purchased because I may make a, a more modifications. We'll see, we'll see. So that is my soldatna. Let me think. Is there anything else I wanted to tell you about this? Oh, and let me show you. I'll show you. I hope it, let's see. I'll have to do it upside down because I can hold it better. So there's my little pearl ridge, right? Uh, not, not pearl ridge. My pearl seam. And again, I'm holding it upside down because it's harder to show you. Wait, can I show you this way? Oh, I guess so. Here, let me. I'm going to turn the sleeve inside out. There's my little pearl seam. Okay, and I have that on both sides. And it really seems to help with. Right? Uh, maybe it's me because I'm new ish at doing in the round. I've only been doing in the round sweaters for mm, just this year, I think. No, at the end of last year I made a couple of sweaters. Um, I think I made one by Andrea Maori, Rock Creek, and I think that was, my, that was my first in the round sweater. But even at that, I put that pearl ridge in there, and I'm not sure why. I, I must have heard it or learned it somewhere, and so I put it in, and now I just always do it. It's not even a question of should I, it's I do. But see how it, it just, the garment... I mean, it's really, it's so great. So, I can't say enough. If you have not made this soldatna yet, which I'm sure that most of you have, put it on your list because it is super, super fabulous. I mean, here is, so far, and I kept this, 
This is the, I actually started with the back of this garment. This is the As If Tea by Shea Johnson. And a lot of you have already made this and some of you are making, I know Shamika is out there and I know Shamika is making this for the bowling night. And this is what, where I am with this. So I started with the back and I did that I did that because I started with the back and I usually do in a pattern even if the pattern has you starting with the front piece quite often I will start with the back and the reason I did that is because I didn't swatch. Oh gee, what a surprise. What a surprise. I didn't swatch. What I did was I from my boy Lollipop, I had used a lot of DK yarn because I made several versions of the my boy Lollipop. So I used those numbers and needle size to give me an idea of how many stitches I should cast on for the as if T. And based on uh, and the My Boy Lollipop was more fitted, so I sort of calculated, okay, I want a little more ease, how many stitches should I cast on, how many are in the pattern, how close am I, and I, I did it that way. But then I started with the back thinking, well, before I have to divide for the front part of the As If T, if I'm going to have any gauge and size issues, I want to figure those out on the back side because it'll be easier to rip out than having to deal with the front pieces. So that's why I started with the back. And those of you that have the pattern will probably, under, you know, you'll know why because you have to split for where the mohair and the regular yarn, um, the DK would. Actually, no, I'm sorry, you guys. I use DK and I think the pattern calls for worsted. So that's why I used My Boy Lollipop to get an idea of how many stitches I should cast on. So I think I'm good to go here. I did, I did not a full block. I did soak it for 10 minutes, laid it out, dried it, because I wanted to know if I had enough mohair here. And I kept it on its needles. I may do a three needle bind off. Uh, the pattern calls for another, uh, um, the pattern instructions are a little different, but I may do a three needle bind off. Um, and so I, I kept this on the needles and started my, now I'm working on the front piece, but I'm only a few inches into it, so it's not much to show you. But so far, I'm very excited about this. Now, let me tell you, oh, the yarn. Uh, Knit Stitch is a yarn dyer that I found at my local yarn store, I think, a year or more ago, and I love their yarns or her yarns. It's a well, I think she's out of Colorado, the, the dyer. And here is the company logo. Knit Stitch. And this colorway is called Flamingo with a Chance of Cloudy. I just love it. It's a beautiful bluish pink, which of course works with my skin tone. It's bright enough and I really love it and as it turned out those of you who follow me on Instagram I showed you a picture of another I was going to use a different color mohair uh, something that was more pink and this is sort of a part like almost a purplish a pale purpley I guess it's more purple almost right that here it's almost more purple and this is by Bay Street Yarns. The color is Cheshire. And I was so thrilled. When I was getting ready to, you know, I pulled my yarns and I thought, oh, I'm going to use the other pink. And then I'm staring at it and I thought, is that the best color to, to, to match up with uh, the body of, of the garment? And, and then I remembered, oh, wait, I have this other really great color that might work really well with it. So that is this one from Bay Street Yarns, Cheshire. So fabulous. Very exciting about that. So let me put those there. So um, that, what, what else can I say about this? Um, I know some people actually held the mohair throughout and did their whole garment. That would be a great option. I think I might try that in the future. We'll see. 
um, but so far I'm doing per well not quite per the pattern instructions I actually um, I did something a little different around the, where where I am making the underarm I actually cast on a few extra stitches partially because I was worried that the mohair might come in because it's thinner yarn than my DK and so I was worried that my that it would change the dimensions of the garment so I increased three stitches on each edge and also that will give me a little bit of a sleeve I think the as if tee is pretty capped and I wanted it just slightly longer so I just cast on a few extra stitches um, so that the sleeve will hang just a tiny bit longer also what I did and you'll be able to see that once I'm finished with the garment also what I did is I also quite often when I do stockinette flat when I work flat I notice that my tension is off between my knit and purl and I can adjust that if I really focus on my purling and somehow I just because I did that with another garment and I was able to have very consistent stitches but I really had to focus on it and I thought well instead of having to focus so much that I can still listen to audiobooks or watch YouTube knitting podcasts I would try using one size needle for the front side of the work the knitting side and then on the purl side I would use one size down so on this particular garment I used a size 6 needle on the knit side and a size 5 needle on the purl side and I noticed that on the front of the garment let me bring this up. I noticed on the front of the garment my stitches are pretty consistent and on the back of the garment I do not have rowing out. Is that focusing? I think there's the focus. So I have avoided rowing out I'm so thrilled about that and I put it on my Instagram you may have already um, I, I know someone commented oh my god what a great idea that we're gonna try it oh, Raina hi Raina the slow knitter if you haven't checked her out check out Raina from the slow knitter she's my little um, uh, social media knitting buddy and so that that's where I'm at so far oh I do see one little okay so maybe I see a couple stitches that aren't I'm mostly consistent it's not a hundred percent. I see a tiny. Now that I'm looking at, it, I see one little area that rode out for some. Actually, just that one little section. Oh well, it is handmade. I'm not a machine. I'm very, very thrilled with this. As if T. I don't think I'm going to have much. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't want it fitted, but I didn't want it too loosey goosey. And I saw in pictures, um, again on Ravelry, I looked, or on Instagram too, I looked at a lot of pictures. And some people have it more fitted, a little more flowy, and so I guess it just depends on our personal preference. Oh, and this too, I did make it longer. It's not as cropped because it's pretty cropped. The pattern calls to make it pretty cropped. And I just didn't feel for my body shape. And I don't know, at 60 years of age, I'm not sure I should be wearing crop shirt, you know, crop sweaters that fall right below my bust. Although, who cares, right? We should be able to wear whatever we want, regardless of our age. Well, mostly what we want. I mean, <laughs> there's a limit, I think. But we should, right? We should be able to wear what we want. Uh, so that's that. And um, let's see, what else? What else? What else? Sometimes I like to promote other makers that are non-fiber related makers. And today I would like to talk about not perfect linen I love this dress Actually, who, how did I find out about them they came across my Instagram feed and I think Amy from mm -hmm. from Stephen and Penelope I think Amy actually she may I know she has some because I saw it on her Instagram feed and maybe that's how I might have liked something and so not perfect linen came onto my feed and I thought, oh, let me check them out. And I did. And I thought, oh, they're so far away, and they're, they're in Europe, and it'll take forever to get here. And 
But then I read all the reviews and I looked at the garments and I said, oh my God, you know what? I'm going to try. So I sent away for the dress, loved it. That night I ordered uh, a pair of pants, a long sleeve shirt, and a little like tank, uh, which came the other day. And they are so beautiful. And what's really cool, oh, maybe I should get them. So I'm going to, I'll come up close so you can see. This is the teal. And this, this is, I will insert all the information below or, or I'll, I'll do a, um, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put titles below with the name of this one. It's, I think it's called the smock dress and I really love it. It's a little longer. You can get them in several different lengths and I just love this dress. Um, when I got home last week, and it and this had arrived in the mail, I was so excited, and I had uh, leggings on, well, sort of leggings, so I put the dress on right away, and I thought, oh my gosh, I can wear this with leggings or without, you can wear it with, uh, you know, with crop tops over it or not, um, you can throw a sweater, cardigan, whatever. So, yes, so I ordered the pants, two other tops, and then, because I love this dress so much, I ordered another dress, but I ordered the version that has the buttons right here. So now I'm waiting for that one. And but they're they're great. The the service is great, the delivery is great. I'm just so thrilled. So let me show you a couple of these swatch samples. But they sent me this whole pack. They sent me this whole pack of samples of colors. And with the names on them. So here you have olive. Taupe, wait, hold on, right, taupe, uh-oh, the AC is on, so things are moving about, moving about, chocolate, I don't want to show you all of them and bore you guys, but not perfect linen, you can find them on Etsy, if you haven't checked them out, do check them out, because it's really beautiful, it's beautiful linen, it's a nice weight. I've washed this dress already. Just I was curious. Um, oh, and what I love, you know what one of my pet peeves is? I have purchased pants. Like you spend a lot of money on some jeans. They're very expensive and I don't pay attention and I get home and I wash them and then I realize that the seam is not sewn in correctly. It's, it's twisted so that maybe up here the seam goes this way into whatever it's attached the waistband or something and then at the bottom attaching at the hem the seam lays this way so that in the middle right the fabric sort of twists and it makes me insane because if they're tight pants like fitted like legging type jeans you can sometimes see that little pucker where the fat because the seam is you know it's thick and it'll it'll twist in the fabric and it makes me absolutely bonkers and so I did when I uh, when I got this garment I checked I turned it inside out I looked at all the seams and I said oh my gosh this is they were very conscientious the makers uh, at not perfect linen they were very conscientious about the seams and so everything is really beautifully done so thank you so much ladies over and gents, I don't know, maybe there's men that are working there too. But thank you so much at Not Perfect Linen because I just love my Not Perfect Linen linen garments that I just received. And when I get my next dress, you guys, I will show you that as well. I almost forgot, you guys, to mention my little crown. I did a crochet crown. So I think I need to make my flower crown first and then fit this around it. I think that'll work better. So I just, um, <clears throat> I made this in a couple of hours. I will link below the video I followed um, to do the crown. I did it slightly differently. You can, well, they'll explain it to you. So you can make the crown portion, this, this here, you can make this narrow or wider. And uh, what I think would be really cool is to get some kind of wire, a very thin wire, crochet with the wire so that these little peaks really stand up and are stiff. So I may go to Michael's and see if I can find some kind of jewelry wire. So that is my little crochet crown. 
Isn't that cool? It's my first one. I'm just playing with it. And this little queenie here is going to sign out for today, and we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>